Hey everyone, this is Brad from DevOps Journey, and in today's video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started with Terraform. All right, so we're going to start off with the installation of Terraform. Now I'm sitting on Windows here. The installation for Mac and Linux is very similar, and I'll make sure to have all the instructions for how to install in each operating system in my GitHub. So check that out if you need any of the commands within this video. Now I have a PowerShell window open, and the most important thing you need to remember when opening the PowerShell is to run it as an administrator. And you can do that just by right clicking and doing run as administrator. I'm using Windows Terminal here, which is a multi-tab PowerShell utility, but this works the same as just regular PowerShell. So we're gonna install Terraform using Choco. And basically what Choco is, is a package manager for PowerShell. It's very similar to the Linux app get install or on Mac, the brew install. And the installation of it is pretty simple. You just need to go to their website and then copy and paste down here. Again, this will be available in my GitHub. So you can just copy the command and you copy it in, you paste it into your PowerShell and it goes ahead and it installs Choco for you. This will take a few minutes to install. I'll speed up the video, but if you do get errors, it's probably that you did not run your PowerShell as an administrator, so make sure to do that. Um, it looks like it installed pretty quickly there before I even finished talking. So we're ready to move forward, and it's very simple to install Terraform using Choco. Let's clear the screen. All you need to do is go Choco, install, Terraform. And this will go out and it'll install Terraform. And I'm just gonna press capital A for all to accept everything and uh, it's gonna go ahead and install here. It's a relatively small package, so it's gonna take less than a minute. And it looks like it's done already. So that's how easy it is to get Terraform installed. Let's have a look at some of the commands here. So the first command you're gonna to wanna to run for Terraform is Terraform version. And this is just gonna specify the version of Terraform that you have installed. Don't worry if your version is different than mine. Most likely it is because Terraform sees lots of updates and it's always evolving but the basics are always gonna be the same. The next thing we're gonna do here is we're just gonna write Terraform, and this is gonna give us a list of all the commands that are available for us for Terraform. So you can see it's a big list, but we actually only use a few of these to do the bulk of the work. And if you ever need any help with any of these commands, all you need to do is type Terraform, do a dash help, and then put in the command name. So if I wanted to see what init did, I would just put that in there, Terraform dash help init. And this will give me exactly what Terraform init does. It gives me a nice description of the command as well as all the options. Other than that, I think the best way to learn Terraform is to get our hands dirty and start using the tool. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a web server using Terraform. And the provider we're gonna use is gonna be Docker. Now Terraform can work with tons of different providers and those providers are usually like AWS, Azure, Vulture, basically any cloud hosting company worth their salt, as well as virtualized infrastructures like VirtualBox and Docker. Uh, Docker is free, so I think it's the best place to get started. If you don't have Docker installed, that's fine. You should still follow along and you'll get a good idea of how you can use Terraform and you can bring that over to your AWS or to your Azure. Everything's done the same. It's just your Terraform configuration files that are gonna be a little bit different depending on your provider. And in future videos, I'll show you how to go to AWS. I'll show you how to go to Azure. So the provider doesn't really matter that much. It's more about learning how Terraform works. So we're gonna start off by just creating a new directory and I'm gonna call this Docker Lab. And then I'm gonna pop into there and I'm gonna open up my code editor here. And as you can see, I got an empty directory here. So I'm gonna create a new file. And I'm gonna call it main.tf. So one thing that you guys will probably notice right off the bat is that I have this Terraform symbol up at the top left of my file here, as well as when I start to get typing, you're gonna notice syntax highlighting. That's because I'm using an extension for Terraform under Visual Studio Code. And if you're using Visual Studio Code as well, then I recommend going over to extensions and installing this Terraform extension. And that'll help you do the syntax highlighting and it just makes it a lot easier to learn. If you're not using a code editor like this and you're just using Notepad, that's fine as well. Everything's gonna work just the same. It's just a lot easier to learn with the syntax highlighting. So I really recommend using something like Visual Studio Code with syntax highlighting packages. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started on writing our first Terraform file. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna specify a resource block. And a resource block is gonna be our building blocks for our infrastructure as code. So they're very simple to start off. We just do resource, and then we do two curly brackets. Within these curly brackets are the parameters. But first, we need to feed it two different strings. So I'll set up some quotations here. This first string is the resource type. 
So for our example here, we're going to start off with a Docker image. Now this is going to be different depending on your provider and depending on the resource type. So with Docker, it'll always start with Docker underscore and then the resource type. So we're going to build a Docker image and then we're going to build a Docker container. If we're working with AWS, it would always be AWS underscore the resource type. So AWS underscore VPC, AWS underscore EC2. So the naming scheme is pretty simple. It really describes what the resource type is, and it makes a lot of sense when you're writing these files. It's really easy to pick up. You just need to do it a few times. So that's always what the first string is for the resource type. The second string is the friendly name that you're giving it. So I'm going to call mine Nginx, but you can call yours whatever you want. You could call it example. You could call it web server. You could call it Bobo the circus clown. It doesn't really matter. All that matters is that you're consistent with the name. So you'll notice when we create our next resource block, we're going to make a reference to this one. So that's where the naming is going to matter. So we're off to a good start here. We've got a resource block defined. We set the resource type and we gave it a friendly name. The next thing we're going to do is specify the parameters. And it's pretty simple for a Docker image. We just need to specify the image name. And I'm going to put nginx colon latest. And if you're not familiar with Docker, basically what this is saying is grab the official Nginx image, which is a web server, and make sure it's the latest version. The next thing I'm going to specify is keep locally. And I'm going to specify as false. You can set true if you want, but I always want to go out and get the latest image. So that's our first resource. But all this is going to do is it's going to go and grab a Docker image. It's not going to actually build a Docker container, which is what we want. The container is the resource that we're trying to create here, and that container is going to use an image to build itself. So let's build a second resource block, and we'll do our curly brackets, and then the two strings we're going to feed it is we want a Docker container, and then we want to give it a name. So I'm just going to give it the same name, Nginx, and then within those brackets I'm going to specify the image that I want to use. So I'm going to say image, and then for the image, I'm going to actually reference this resource here. So I'm going to go docker underscore. So I'm going to go within quotations docker underscore image. And you can see it auto detects what I wanted to do here. So I'll just click that. Oh, I put it added this these variable things. So I'll take that out. But I want nginx dot latest. Then I'll hit enter, and then I want to give it a name. So let's give it a name, and this is going to be the name of the container. I'll say web server. Now this isn't going to be a very good web server if we just bring it up like this, because web servers expect network traffic. And if you have network traffic coming in, you need to do a little bit of port forwarding. So we're going to specify some ports here. And I'm going to say within here, the internal port is 80. So this is the port that the container is listening on. And then I'm going to specify the external to be 8,000. And this is the server that my local host or like my Docker server is listening on. So it'll receive traffic on port 8000 and send it to the container on port 80. So I'm quickly just verifying this. And this looks like everything that we need to get started. So let's hop back into the command line and run some commands. If we missed anything here, Terraform is going to let us know that there's a problem with the configuration of this file. So don't worry about it too much. Terraform provides a lot of debugging information if there's any errors. So. Let's hop back in and start running the Terraform commands. So since I'm in Visual Studio Code, I'm just going to open a terminal from here. But you can use your PowerShell or whatever command prompt you want to use. I just find it convenient to be in here so we can see exactly what's going on. On the left hand side, I have all my files. And then here, I have uh, my commands. So it makes it easy to see. So the very first thing that you want to do when working on a new Terraform project, you want to go Terraform init. So basically what this does is it reads all the files within the working directory. So it'll see this main.tf and it's going to go ahead and download anything that it needs to run this Terraform script. So we're using Docker, for example. So it's going to go and find the Docker plugins and download them, make sure they're up to date and get that working. So we're going to do that. And we should see a folder pop up here. And it looks like we did. And we got an error here, actually. Um, I put docker space container, it was docker underscore container. One of those mistakes you make when you're talking and writing code at the same time. So let's rerun that in it and we shouldn't get the error again. And you can see that everything looks good. So green means good. So we're in good shape here. And then we can see that it created this hidden directory here. And if you go into it, 
you can see that it's Terraform plugins and it knows that I'm on a Windows machine. So it downloaded the Docker provider plugin for Windows. So you'll always need to run the Terraform init when you're working with a new provider or on a new machine because this downloads the binaries that are needed to work with that provider. The next thing that we need to do is we're going to actually apply our Terraform file here. And to do that is as simple as just going Terraform, apply. And this is going to return some output here. And if I expand this and scroll up, maybe I can resize this a bit, we can see that Terraform is telling us exactly what Terraform wants to do. So it's creating a new resource. The resource is a Docker container, and here's all the settings that it's changing. So the plus size is green, means it's being added or created. And if there was a red minus sign, that means it would be getting rid of it. So this is an entirely new container. So everything is being created here. So the next thing is, you'll notice that the prompt at the bottom is it's saying, is all this information correct? Is this exactly what you want to do? All you need to do is specify yes, if it is correct. And then it's going to go ahead and start provisioning. All right, so we got an error here, and that's a good thing because errors help us learn. And it's saying that unable to create container with image docker underscore image dot nginx dot latest. So let's have a look at that. So it'll be in our main.tf file. So I'm looking at my Terraform file again. And one thing that I notice that's coming up because I have that syntax highlighting extension is both these resources are saying zero references. And that's bad with a Terraform file because it's saying, hey, you've created these resources, but nothing's referencing them. And if I look down here, I notice that I thought I was referencing this resource block using this file, but I made one critical error. And that error was, I put this in quotations, so Terraform took this in as a string, instead of taking it in as a variable like it should have. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those quotations. And now you can see that that zero references thing went away, so this is looking a lot better already. This line right here is now properly referencing the above resource. So let's go ahead and run our Terraform command again. And we'll do a Terraform apply. And it's Terraform, not Terraform. And it wants us to hit yes again, so we will. And we can see that that looks good. The apply has completed. The resources added was one, zero changes, and zero things destroyed. So the next thing I want to do is, since this is creating a Docker container, I should check Docker to see if a container got created. So I'll just do a Docker PS. And I can see, yes, a container was created about 39 seconds ago. And the name is web server. And if you want, I can even test that. I'm on Windows here, so if I use the curl command, I actually need to go to this IP address to reach all Docker containers. And then I do port 8000. And you can see that it returns some web traffic here. Welcome to Nginx. So that shows that our web server came up. It's working fine. And it was all done through Terraform. We didn't run a single Docker command to get this Docker container up and running. And it's just that easy when you're working with Terraform, and it really does not matter what your provider is. This would have been the same thing if we were doing AWS or Azure. It's just the parameters that you enter into the resource blocks that change depending on the provider. So that's good. The next thing we should go over is if you've been watching on the left-hand side of the screen, you should notice that two different files got created here. We got TF state and then tfstate.backup. So tfstate is basically looking at the state of your infrastructure. So after we ran this apply command, so after we did the terraform apply command, it went down and got all the parameters for our Docker container and put it into this file. Now, this is not a file that you go and modify to make changes. You should think of it as informational. It's basically using it to track the changes that it's making. As I do more videos for terraform, we'll have a look at this tfstate file and how it changes. But for now, just understand that it's there and it has the parameters of the infrastructure resources that we are creating. If you look at the tfstate.backup, it's just a backup version. So if I were to run another apply that made changes, it's basically just rolling the file over and over. So you can see, hey, what exactly changed from the last tfstate to the tfstate backup. Now, the next thing we should do is make some changes to our main.tf. And this will show you how easy it is to make changes using Terraform. So let's say that I made a mistake while provisioning and the boss says, we don't want containers listening on port 8000. We want ports listening on port 8050. So to make that change, we just go and change that. And then we'll rerun Terraform apply. 
and it's asking us if we want to perform these actions. So we'll scroll up and check this out, and we can see that there's a bunch of red and yellow. Basically, this is the new change, and it's saying this is forcing a replacement. And if we go to the top, it says docker container dot nginx must be replaced. So this is a change that can't be made to the infrastructure resource, in our example, the docker container, without wiping it out completely and rebuilding it. Now that really isn't a problem since we have our exact configuration of our container in code up here. So it doesn't really matter that it wipes it out and brings it back up. We're fine with that. So let's go ahead and type yes. And if we do a docker ps, we can see that that Docker container is up and the new port to get to it is 8050. And a curl command to my IP and then 8050 shows that it works. So it's just that easy to make a change using Terraform. Now the last thing I'm going to show for this video is how can we wipe this all out and make that container go away. And to do that is very simple. We just do a Terraform destroy. And then it wants to confirm. And we're just going to scroll up and see what it says here. It's saying it's going to be destroyed. And the container.nginx will be destroyed. So we'll go yes. And we can see that it's been destroyed. And if we do a docker ps, we can see that that container no longer exists and it's been removed. So anyways, I hope this video was helpful on getting started with Terraform. I'm going to do more videos in the future showing more advanced examples on how to build your Docker infrastructure as code. I'll also do some videos on Vulture, some on AWS and Azure. Just let me know in the comments below which provider you're most interested in and I'll start making videos on that provider. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed this content, please hit the like button. If you want to see more, please subscribe. And I just want to thank you all again for watching.